All right, I just got word from our tech team that we are now live. So everyone, welcome. My name is Robin Tim Weiss, and as the project manager of the Zero Project, I want to welcome you to the Zero Project Conference 2021. And I really want to start off just with a big thank you. A thank you to Chris Weaver and the entire Keystone Human Services team who have brought together and put together this um, awesome and wonderful uh, partner channel session. And it is really only thanks to partners such as Keystone that we're actually even able to organize this virtual global conference. So the Zero Project Conference does not happen without trusted organizations and trusted partner organizations such as Keystone. So I just really want to say a big thank you at this point and uh, give the stage to Keystone. Thank you so much uh, for bringing this together. We genuinely appreciate it and I look forward to the session. Robin, thank you so much. It's an honor for us to be here. So hello to everyone. We're delighted to have you all with us at this panel session today on the importance and impact of employment in individual lives. I am Genevieve Fitzgibbon. I am the Deputy Director for Keystone Human Services International. We have an excellent panel of speakers with us today from three different corners of the globe. I will be introducing each of our panelists individually as we go through the session. But before moving into the discussion with our panelists, I would like to share some general housekeeping guidance for those of us who are joining on Zoom, as well as those joining through the Zero Project platform. Attendees all have their microphones automatically muted and cameras off. We will also ask our panelists to keep uh, your microphones on mute, please, until it's um, your time to present and speak. Panelists will be spotlighted as they speak, and you should always be able to see our sign language interpreters. If you cannot see the sign language interpreter and the spotlighted panelist at the same time in the um, Zoom platform, you might not be working from the latest version of Zoom and may need to update. The Zoom chat is open to our panelists and we will be using that to share any information or responses um, with attendees live. So please watch the chat for any information and our support team um, that may be shared. We also have a team member monitoring the Zero Project Conference chat for our session. So if you have questions for our panelists, please post them at any time in the Q&A box in Zoom, in the black navigation panel at the bottom of your screen, or in the Zero Project chat alongside of the session. If we have time at the end for discussion, we will address your questions to our panelists at that time. Also, please connect with any of us in the Zero Project uh, attendees chat room and we will do our best to respond right away. We're looking forward to connecting with all of you and, and sharing um, ideas, support, knowledge with each other. Captions are available in the Zoom space by clicking the CC button and then the show subtitle, which is also found at the bottom of the Zoom screen. Uh, which you can click in the black navigation panel. On behalf of all of us, please let me extend my sincere gratitude and our sincere gratitude to our CART services, the captioning provider, and also our sign language interpreters for your support throughout this event. This session is being recorded and it will be available on Keystone Human Services digital media as well as Zero Projects conference space. And we ask you to please follow the conversation today on Twitter um, in addition to the Zero Project also at Keystone underscore KHS and hashtag ZeroCon21. And so, Without further ado, I would like to introduce Charles Hooker, the president and CEO of Keystone Human Services. Throughout his four decades of work in human services, Charlie has been a strong voice of support for people to live full 
meaningful lives within their communities, highlighting that being employed is an important component to a person's involvement in their community and that we all have a role to play in eliminating barriers to employment. Charlie, we're so happy to have you with us here today. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Genevieve. Good morning, good day, good evening, or as we might say in Vienna, good morgen, guten tag, or guten abend. I'm Charles Hooker, the president and CEO of Keystone Human Services and a global provider of services and supports for individuals with intellectual disability, autism, and psychosocial disability. I am honored to open this session that highlights Keystone's work in employment as a best practice recognized by the Zero Project. First, let me congratulate Keystone Autism Services and the Adult Community Autism Program on this recognition for their work in assuring those that they support have employment at the core of their services and supports. Person-centeredness and developing pathways to the good life are common themes wherever we work. We've always believed firmly in the importance of employment as one of the central pathways to real inclusion. The path towards inclusion requires freely developed relationships. We often ask, how do we get those relationships? We see they are gained through socially valued roles. Where do we gain those roles? It's often through work. It's what adults do. It's more than a paycheck, which by itself is quite important, but it's also about self-esteem and the opportunity to develop those freely given relationships that lead to belonging. That belonging leads to friendships. The friendships lead to inclusion and the good life. Keystone Mission is creating opportunities for growth and meaningful life choices that all people can be valued contributing members of their community. Our vision of supporting people within their communities in natural settings such as home, work, neighborhood, and school remains the same wherever we work, whether it's in the United States, Moldova, India, or other places like Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, and Romania and the Russian Federation where we have worked in the past. Wherever we work, the universality of our approach and our mission remains the same. Thank you so much for this opportunity to open this session. Welcome everyone, and I'll now turn the floor back over to Genevieve. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. I'm reflecting today on the things that we all need to do as a society to contribute towards the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goal number eight, specifically in helping to achieve full and productive employment and decent work for all people, and equal pay for work of equal value, and how this ties with Article 27 of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability, which focuses on work and employment, which states that states, parties recognize the right of persons with disabilities to work on an equal basis with others, which includes the right to opportunity to gain a living by work freely chosen or accepted in a labor market and work environment that is open, inclusive, and accessible to persons with disabilities. I'm proud to be part of an organization that's contributing to these goals in a meaningful way. I will now turn to Dr. Kimberly Siegfried and Catherine Talada. Dr. Siegfried is the clinical director for Keystone Autism Services. She is a nationally certified school psychologist with a PhD in school psychology and an MED in human development. She has over 20 years experience supporting individuals with autism of all ages in home and community settings. Catherine Talada is the Director of Employment at Keystone Autism Services and leads employment services in the Adult Community Autism Program, otherwise known as ACAP. She spearheaded the creation of Keystone Autism Services Vocational Initiative an innovative approach to support young adults with autism to pursue employment, post-secondary education and advocate for themselves. 
She is certified in customized employment from the American College of Rehabilitation Educators and is involved with Employment First Initiative in PA, which means real jobs for real pay. Dr. Siegfried, I turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, I believe Catherine is going to be introducing our first few slides. We very much appreciate the warm welcome and the introduction, and we look forward to presenting to you on our wonderful program. Thank you, Kim, and thank you, Genevieve, for that introduction, and thank you all for joining us today. As the Director of Employment, it's my responsibility to keep the importance and the impact of employment at the forefront of Keystone Autism Services as we collaborate to support individuals in obtaining and maintaining employment. In my work with the Adult Community Autism Program and throughout my career, I have seen firsthand the positive impact that competitive integrated employment can have on someone's life. I have also seen the shortfalls in the disability service system and the need for development of innovative practices to ensure quality employment supports. I have been fortunate to be a part of an organization that is committed to supporting adults with disabilities to be valued and fully participating members of their society. This mission leads to the best outcomes for employment. So I'm excited to explain more about the ACAP model, why employment services are needed and our approach to expand employment opportunities. We will conclude with a participant example to demonstrate how our model supports successful employment outcomes for adults with autism. Now I would like to reintroduce Dr. Siegfried, Clinical Director for Keystone Autism Services, who will take a moment to review some of our foundational aspects of the program critical to understanding our success in employment services. Thank you, Catherine, for the introduction. 10 years ago, Keystone Autism Services proposed a paradigm shift in human service delivery. In contrast to the traditional model of service delivery, their vision was to support adults with autism within their communities in natural settings rather than segregated facilities. Determined to evolve the role from that of a provider of services to that of a facilitator and community organizer. Their model incorporated several key aspects, person-centered services across the lifespan, efficient, accessible, sustainable, quality, and cost-effective services, and partnership among individuals, families, government, and providers. From this vision and in partnership with the Bureau of Autism Services, the Adult Community Autism Program, ACAP, emerged. ACAP was the first program in the nation to use a single home and community-based services provider, Keystone Autism Services, to provide an integrated system of care as a managed care organization. The capitation payment methodology by which it operates allows for a flexible, holistic, person-centered approach to supporting adults with autism. Employment is connected to many aspects of our daily life. So ACAP approaches employment as an integral part of each individualized plan. Employment specialists work with a team of supports alongside each participant as they develop and work towards goals. Behavioral health specialists, supports coordinators, community support workers and drivers are all critical team members. An inclusive, collaborative approach contributes significantly to ACAP's successful outcomes in employment and is key to inclusion in the workforce. Challenges related to accessing employment among individuals with disabilities is well evidenced and provides the rationale for an innovative and holistic service delivery model. Reflected here are statistics that illustrate some of those challenges. Sponsored by the US Department of Labor's Office of Disability Employment Policy, Data on persons with a disability are collected as part of a monthly sample survey of about 60,000 households that provide statistics on labor inclusion in the United States. 
persons with a disability are less likely to have completed a bachelor's degree or higher than those with no reported disability. Across all age groups surveyed, the employment to population ratios were much lower for persons with a disability than for those with no disability. Across all educational attainment groups, unemployment rates for a person with a disability were higher than those for persons without a disability. Additionally, workers with a disability were more likely to be employed part-time compared with those with no disability. Among workers with a disability, 32% usually worked part-time in 2019, compared with 17% of those with no reported disability. These data reinforce the need for our services to ensure all individuals are afforded equal access to the labor market. Some distinctive challenges to labor inclusion experienced by adults with autism include communication and social skill challenges that may affect interactions with their supervisors, coworkers, customers, or patrons. Specifically, adults with autism may have difficulty understanding vague directions, others' intentions or wants, if not directly stated, facial expressions, and tone of voice. They also may need support clearly articulating, taking turns in conversations, and understanding social nuances, including the use of idioms and sarcasm. Individuals may also need support with hygiene and grooming, understanding social rules, including respecting personal boundaries and collaborating with others. Adults with autism may also have sensory integration challenges that affect the quality of their employment experience. Ritualistic behavior, need for routine or consistency, self-injury and disruptive self-stimulatory behaviors such as loud vocalizations may also challenge the employment experience of adults with autism. Additionally, executive functioning differences related to organizing, planning, paying attention, and inhibiting certain responses may impact employment. Despite the system and individual level challenges, employment of individuals with autism is mutually beneficial for the employer and employees. Employers have noted employees with autism demonstrate great aptitude for roles requiring attention to detail, technical strengths, and appreciation for routine and repetition that others may find aversive and monotonous. Innovation and creativity and perspective, reliability and persistence. Research and employer experience also indicate hiring employees with autism for roles matched to their unique skills and interests can lead to greater productivity, fewer errors, lower costs. Employees with and without autism have reported improved morale and positivity associated with an inclusive workplace. Employees with autism have reported improved confidence and self-esteem when afforded opportunities aligned with their strengths and interests. Increasing access to employment opportunities for adults with autism also helps strengthen their self-determination and autonomy and fosters a sense of belonging and inclusion. These benefits lead to improved health, the ability to exercise choice and control, lower levels of discrimination and harassment, increased chances of economic well-being, and greater personal dignity. Individuals who support themselves through gainful employment are also less reliant on government assistance. The ACAP employment approach focuses on inclusion in the labor market. We believe that every person who desires to work should have the opportunity to be employed. Specifically, competitive employment in typical work settings, side-by-side -side people without disabilities, earning regular wages and benefits as the first and preferred outcome. The ACAP employment approach also focuses on a commitment to building competence confidence and independence so people can lead full and meaningful lives. The individual's own personal attributes 
and interests are a key consideration when planning for employment. Answering who the person is provides information about essential motivators and preferences that should be considered when making a successful job match. ACAP provides guidance on what actions, tasks, or skill building is needed to get the job that the individual desires. Training may focus on the development of social skills, financial literacy, job seeking skills, understanding employer expectations for punctuality and performance, as well as other soft skills to keep a job such as time management or decision making. Vocational experiences are essential to introducing individuals to work and provide an opportunity to explore real world activities prior to getting a job. Networking with prospective employers and utilizing the individual's existing relationships creates access to new opportunities for employment. Participants' strengths are highlighted so employers see a qualified worker and how they can be an asset. Once an individual finds employment, they may receive support during the training process. We provide continuous support when needed to assist individuals to maintain long-term employment, including emotional support, counseling, and specific job-related problem-solving interventions. Collaboration with natural supports and taking action toward a unified goal is important to sustain progress and future success. Other models often end employment supports with job placement. Within ACAP employment supports, we span over the individual's duration in the program, or essentially their lifespan. As a result, participants grow in their employment during their time with ACAP and decrease the need for highly structured professional services. To illustrate our employment approach in action, I would like to introduce you to Mike an ACAP participant who has found success in his employment. Mike is an incredibly talented person and worker. His employment history included working part-time at a family member store and as a peer mentor. He began working with his job developer, Cassia, to overcome barriers to employment and explore competitive integrated employment 20 years after his last work experience. His team spent a lot of time getting to know Mike and understanding the things that are important to him. We learned that Mike enjoys bird watching, gardening, and advocating for others who have disabilities. Next, his job developer supported Mike in exploring work that connected to his interests. The team first took Mike to a store that sells bird watching equipment to interview the owner about what it is like to work in the industry. Ultimately, it was discovered that he wasn't interested in the retail side of the business, only the actual bird watching. With this experience, Mike also began using the strategy of creating a script. Before approaching employers, to help him focus so he may capitalize on his passion and positive personal attributes. The team continued to explore job tasks that matched Mike's interests to optimize his engagement and success. Next, Mike visited a local greenhouse that specialized in orchids. Mike met with the owner and talked to him to learn more about what it was like to work there. This experience was more interesting to Mike and he made a good impression with the owner. This led to an unpaid short-term internship at this greenhouse so he could build his resume. Mike repotted plants, swept, watered, fertilized, and organized. With Mike's permission, the team took photos of Mike working at his internship to be added to his work portfolio. Mike proved his ability to be successful working in a greenhouse. 
Due to the seasonal nature of most greenhouses, Mike had to wait for his next work experience. During the fall and winter, the team reached out to as many local greenhouses as they could find to ask about options for the spring. The team shared the photos of Mike working at his first internship to help employers visualize Mike's skills. One greenhouse supervisor expressed she was interested in working with Mike after she was shown the photos and heard about his work experience. The job developer worked with the employer to set up a job tryout at the greenhouse. The employer had a need for assistance with preparing plants for shipment. Mike tried the preparation and it was a great match for his skills. After that success, Mike continued building his experience in a paid short-term internship, doing the plant preparation with the company for three months. At the end of the three months, Mike's contributions and successes as an intern led to a permanent job opportunity at the greenhouse. Mike was supported by his job developer as he navigated his new job by developing strategies for communication, completing tasks that may be difficult and managing his time most effectively. Mike's behavioral health specialist is also a critical team member helping Mike gain the skills needed to be most successful in his job. By looking for opportunities to learn more about his passions rather than just job openings, Mike was able to prove his ability to get a job. The team recognizes and respects that for Mike to be most engaged in the process, the job has to be important to him. Because he is so interested in plants, Mike put forth his best efforts. Mike's team worked with him as needs emerged, which contributed to his success and is a testimony to the benefit of the ACAP model. Next, I would like to share a short video of Mike. His supervisor will also speak on the benefits of having Mike as an employee, complimenting not only his work, but also his personality. She describes Mike as someone who makes everyone smile. This is a space that I like, and it's where the job comes into play. Oh, I, I was uh, integrated into an employment uh, structured by job development to uh, prepare plants for shipment, uh, starting with the Cala, uh, a little late dwarf and uh, ornamental roses uh, and uh, ornamental azaleas uh, to be sent to others' gifts. So it's been worthwhile. Hi, I'm Cindy Myers. I'm the Human Resource and Operations Manager at Greenleaf Plants, a division of Aris Horticulture. We're excited that we get to collaborate with Keystone Autism Services to customize jobs for some of their people. We have Mike working with us, and we really enjoy having Mike come with us every day. He just brings a joy to the workplace. He works with doing various projects with us, uh, with packing and prepping plants. And as I said before, he just comes in with a smile, and anyone who interacts with him is just so happy to have him here. Now in my 56th year, I understand and know it's just the doing to Consider that uh, if we remember a little bit of what we say, a little more of what we read, a little more of what we write, but most of what we do is, is memory and is placed into memory. So I say, trust less to chance and place more emphasis in what I do. I would like my process to be known, and if I don't do anything, that won't happen. But I'm doing, I'm doing activities now more so than I was able to before, years ago. Uh, uh, that makes me happy uh, in my own space. And that's important to me. When the COVID pandemic began, all of our lives were quickly and drastically changed. 
Mike continued his job until the COVID pandemic prompted him to take a few months off for safety. While he was out of work, his job developer continued to check in with him and his employer to support his transition back to work. Once the employer returned to baseline operations, Mike was able to return to work and resume his typical work schedule. For other ACAP participants, new barriers to employment emerged and many who were employed found themselves unable to work or unemployed. By April, every state reached high levels of unemployment and surpassed the unemployment rates during the Great Recession. As my colleague noted, individuals with disabilities are employed at a disproportionate rate than those without disabilities. This high unemployment rate significantly increased the risk that talented individuals would be left on the sidelines of the economy as employers recovered from the pandemic. This graph reflects the percentage of ACAP participants that were employed from the start of the pandemic until December, 2020. In March, our employment rate for participants was 56%. By December of 2020, the employment rate was 53%. While this decrease was not ideal, the flexible design of the ACAP program allowed participants to adapt to the challenges presented by COVID and to respond to a crisis that left many workers displaced. Now more than ever, we continue to follow the lead of our participants. We support them as they reflect on new opportunities and reevaluate their employment goals in light of the pandemic. For those employed during the pandemic, we adapt our supports to meet the evolving needs of participants and employers alike with consideration to important safety protocols. We support others as they navigate the unemployment system until they return to work or find new employment entirely. In closing, the COVID-19 pandemic has driven our entire organization to redesign our supports to better serve people's needs during this time. It has also strengthened our innovation in creating opportunities for socially valued roles for individuals with disabilities as they live and work in their communities. Now and always, we will continue to highlight the importance and the impact of employment to break down barriers and create a more inclusive world. And with that, I will now turn it back to Genevieve to continue the presentation. Thank you, Catherine, Kimberly, and Mike. Thank you for being with us here today, um, both on, on video and in person. And congratulations again to Keystone Autism Services for your innovative practice um, Zero Project Award. I would now like to turn to Dr. Ludmila Malkoc, Executive Director of Keystone Moldova and Keystone Human Services International Regional Director for Central and Eastern Europe. Under her leadership, Keystone Moldova has become one of the main promoters of social inclusion of persons with intellectual disability in Moldova and throughout the region. Dr. Malkach has more than 20 years of international development experience. She's worked with the World Bank, USAID, UNICEF, and UNDP on projects related to community development, social inclusion, inclusive education, gender mainstreaming, and public health. Dr. Malkach, we're thrilled to have you here with us today. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Genevieve. Um, dear ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to say that uh, I am very inspired to participate in Zero Project Conference and to present Keystone Moldova expertise on employment of persons with developmental disabilities in the Republic of Moldova. Uh, some background information. Keystone Moldova is operating in the country for more than 15 years. The main mission uh, of our organization is to support persons with intellectual disabilities to live a meaningful life in their communities. <clears throat> in this regards, we assisted the government 
to develop inclusive legal framework, community-based social care services, and to move persons with disabilities from big or full residential institutions to communities. We also empowered persons with disabilities to advocate for their rights, including for the right to employment, piloted new models of employment support services, and demonstrated that persons with intellectual disabilities can live valuable lives in their families and communities. Next slide, please. Following the ratification of UN Convention in 2010, the labor environment became more inclusive for persons with disabilities in Moldova. The government introduced the five percentage quota for employment of persons with disability. The state is compensating 30 percentage of the overage salary for each employed person with disabilities for at least six months. And also the state is compensating 50 percentage of the job adaptation costs. Persons with disabilities <clears throat> can also be registered as unemployed and can benefit of supported services and professional rehabilitation for integration in open labor market. Next slide, please. However, the labor inclusion in Moldova is still very challenging. The, first of all, the employment rate of persons with disabilities was 2.4 <clears throat> times less than that of general population in 2019. The COVID-19 pandemic made it even worse. Secondly, <clears throat> the implementation of legal framework on employment is still very weak in the country. There is no, there is very limited number of vocational rehabilitation and employment support services. Persons with disabilities have very low self-esteem and limited knowledge and skills to fight for their right to work. And still we have a problem with the employees that fear to hire persons with disabilities. The next slide, please. Supporting persons with intellectual disabilities to move from residential institutions to communities, Keystone Moldova built an integrated, sustainable approach for labor inclusion of persons with disabilities. We provided support to the government to integrate labor inclusion in all existing policies and legislation. By networking with other non-governmental organizations, we monitored the implementation of UNCRPD requirements on employment of persons with disabilities and provided advocacy activities. Keystone Moldova also enhanced persons with disabilities and their families to advocate for their rights to employment. In this regards, we provided training and mentoring to self-advocates, involved persons with disabilities in policy discussions, provided individual support to them for better labor inclusion, and promoted best labor inclusive practices. Eastern Moldova strengthened also the capacities of employment agency staff on career guidance, mediation of employment of persons with disabilities. I would like to say here that the employment agency is one of main partner of Keystone Moldova for implementation of labor inclusion in the country. We also built partnership relations among employment agency, vocational training institutions and employees to support labor inclusion. The next slide, please. Um, Kison Moldova developed several models of individual support for labor inclusion of persons with developmental disabilities. To mainstream persons with uh, disabilities in open labor market, we provide individual support based on needs assessment. It may include a reference to vocational education, support in job identification, job matching, and support during the probation period, preparing inclusive working environment, also uh, money management support. 24 persons with disabilities were employed legally in shops, greenhouses, factories, services during the last year. We also provide support and job coaching for development of small income generating activities like greenhouses, farms, auto services, shops. Persons with disabilities learn to develop business plans, to develop and start up the businesses, and we provide job coaching based on their needs. We also give the possibility to persons with disabilities to work in our social enterprise, EcoVox. The EcoVox is producing eco-friendly canvas bags. 
persons with disabilities work from home. Keystone is just providing sewing machines, individual training, and job coaching. We have 10 employed persons with disabilities in present producing eco-friendly bags. The next slide, please. The main stereotype in Moldova is that persons with disabilities cannot work. In this regards, we provide several communication campaigns to promote rights of persons with disability to work, as well as to share the best examples of employed persons with disabilities. Our current slide, on, on the, this current slide, you can see some posters, part of communication campaign, work without barriers. The scope of this campaign was to promote rights of persons with disabilities to work as well as to share the stories that persons with disabilities can work and contribute to better life in their communities. The next slide, please. The main lessons learned uh, through the uh, supporting persons with disabilities to get a, a job are as following. First of all, the road to employment of persons with disabilities requires an integrated approach, included, including inclusive legislation, improved community and business environment, employment support services, and participation of persons with disabilities in all matters. Secondly, the person-directed career planning can improve job satisfaction and retention. When a job seeker is the driving force behind the career plan and job search, they will find the job that works for them and stay in this job longer. And sadly, efforts to change attitudes are particularly important for people with disabilities seeking employment, as negative social norms are often internalized and can lead to low self-confidence and limited hope for employment prospects. Confronting and uh, discrediting myth and stereotypes about the limitation of persons with disabilities vis-a-vis -vis employment is key for employees and participants alike. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Malkoch, for uh, your presentation and for sharing with us um, about the impact of your team's work on breaking down barriers and um, working towards a, an end of discrimination against people with disability. Um, congratulations on the impact you're having in the lives of people and their um, right to work. I would now like to turn to Leela Raj. Leela is the project leader for multiple initiatives within Keystone Institute India. With a master's degree in social work and rehabilitation counseling, Leela has worked for more than a decade with families, people with disabilities, and older adults. Her portfolio at the Institute includes developing curricula for direct support workers to promote the professional role in India. In addition, Leela heads up Keystone Institute India's supported employment initiative Leela brings a great deal of experience and commitment with her. As a mentor, a counselor, advocate, and activist, working alongside young adults with developmental disability and their families. Leela, the floor is yours. Please go ahead. Thank you, Genevieve. Hi, everyone. I'm Leela Raj from Mumbai, India. I'm grateful for this opportunity and happy to be here today on behalf of Keystone Institute India. Our vision is to create an environment where all people, regardless of background and ability, can grow and contributing members of our community. In this vision, we see the welfare of all people being vested in the welfare of each individual. This vision compels us to do work that matters and work that contributes towards a more inclusive society. The vision transcends national borders and has the power to unite people in a common cause as far away from our US roots as India. Five years ago, 
Keystone Human Services was asked to establish a national education institute on disability, community and innovation in India. And this paved the way for the establishment of Keystone Institute India, a project of Keystone Human Services in India that serves as a catalyst for developing a service system in India that better safeguards vulnerable people, respects the voices and perspectives of people with disability and their families, and facilitates the country's movement towards a society where all people have possibilities and potential and all matter. Our goals are to, one, forge strong alliances across India with leading edge organizations and individuals providing education and consultation across the country. Two, to develop national leaders in ideas that help people with disability take their rightful place in society. And three, to work towards inclusive everyday lives for people with disabilities who have often been left behind, segregated, and even hidden away. In the Indian scenario of employment for people with developmental disabilities, there has predominantly been a focus on skilling up people in limited job areas without considering their interests or abilities in readiness for a future job which largely never comes their way. People are therefore stuck in segregated training centers, often for life, without a wage nor all the benefits that come from real work. Our major focus area as we have grown in our work is informed by the practices you have heard from Kim and Catherine of Keystone Autism Services, and that is introducing the ideas of adapted customized employment in which people with developmental disabilities, such as autism and intellectual disability, have access to real work for real pay. The new ways we are teaching and demonstrating in India involve discovering people's gifts, interests and talents, identifying adaptations and supports, working with employers to meet the person's needs by adapting positions and negotiating tasks that the person can do. These methods rely on natural supports such as supervisors, colleagues and co-workers rather than the constant direction and supervision of paid support staff. Financial resources are precious in India and a gift of Indian society is communality. Building natural supports is central to our employment work as is developing a network of leaders who can take this new idea in the Indian scenario forward. Our broad-based approach to introducing customized employment in India is our inaugural certificate course in applied customized employment, which will create the first cadre of 25 credentialed co-leaders in customized employment in the country. In tandem, we have piloted a customized employment project to support a small group of women with intellectual and developmental disabilities find real work in keeping with the women's interests and talents and the needs of the employers in the community. Ideas have consequences. The work of helping people with intellectual and developmental disabilities have real employment that fits them is not just about an idea. It impacts real people. Meet Bhavna, a young woman of 23 who until recently grew up and lived in orphanages and government shelter homes. No one ever helped her think about a job or a career, and yet she yearns to not only contribute, but to gain all that comes from working, like having colleagues, putting her skills to use, the rhythm that work provides, not to mention a paycheck. Our Keystone team has had the privilege of walking alongside Bhavna as she explores her interests, including sewing, office work, and photography, and helping her move towards a real career. Not make work, but work that brings her joy and fulfillment. Bhavna's future is truly bright. Our strategy in India has been not to just provide training, but to walk with people to put the ideas we teach to use. We therefore have a number of projects to implement the ideas we teach. I would like to introduce you to Mr. Banerjee, 
who worked for years in a day center doing things typical of day centers to keep him occupied that however never gave him a pay or a sense of contribution his family decided that he could have a different future with consultation with the keystone institute india we together explored valued roles that he could assume that could use his talents and interests so if you travel to one of the trendier sections in kolkata you may be lucky to discover the madalan cafe and even luckier to meet this proud entrepreneur mr banerji the same person who spent over a decade wasting time just being occupied that required some thinking using his existing talents and modifying his work but today he takes home a paycheck and a deep sense of pride and contribution that is our vision in action keystone's vision that sees the welfare of all people being vested in the welfare of each individual are nearly 50 years of experience in learning how to help people enter the world of work and our access to an increasing network of national and international colleagues built over these years fuels our national effort at building expertise and employment for people with developmental disabilities thank you over to genevieve thank you leela we are so grateful for your leadership and that of keystone institute india uh, we're watching with great interest um, the launch of the uh, applied customized employment uh, curriculum initiative i think um, uh we we are all looking forward to seeing what the impacts of that uh are with your partners and colleagues throughout india and look forward to learning together so we're coming close to the end of our time and i think what i'm going to do is ask for any of our colleagues and and partners to share with us continued um conversation and discussion in the zero project conference space we look forward to connecting with you and and as part of our last few minutes together i'm going to ask maybe two of our panelists um uh just put you on the spot and ask if you maybe you would leave us with a a, a closing thought before i wrap up so maybe um i'm going to turn to katherine and and charlie uh and ask each of you um maybe katherine would you mind to go first and then i'll turn to charlie and then we'll wrap up thank you Sure. Thank you, Genevieve. Um, so I actually was speaking with you yesterday afternoon, and you know, it, it occurred to me that um, you know the work that we do in ACAP seems like the typical day-to-day, -day, um, you know, work. And you know, I realize that not everyone has the luxury of having um, a, a model developed for them to um, be innovative. So I just want to encourage everyone to go forward. um and think about the lessons that we've learned from implementing our program that individuals know themselves best people exist among their families friends and community and within that context the context lies opportunities skill development is possible and critical and ongoing creating jobs for people with disabilities and economic development as it benefits the community and to challenge assumptions set new expectations and disrupt the system to change employment outcomes. Thank you, Catherine. And Charlie, any closing thoughts you want to leave our attendees with? Well, it's interesting that some of the closing thoughts um also equal the opening thoughts that uh, I shared in my messaging um in the, in the opening greeting is that what we have always do is take a look at what oftentimes is 